Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, we're looking at the Krell patch. What's a Krell patch? The Krell patch is a, is a name that's been given to kind of a self-perpetuating, machine-led, moving, randomised patch of noise that's inspired mostly by the film Forbidden Planet, which was a 1950s sci-fi extravaganza, which had this extraordinary sound design and music within it that came from this advanced race of alien beings called the Krell. And so there's kind of a, a tradition or, or a history or a, a vibe that we call the Krell patch. That is something that people endeavour to produce with modular synthesizers, because it's exciting and interesting and, and slightly slightly different. So in this video I'm going to build a Krell patch based on the Ericasynth's Black Jewel ASR EG. Because within this lovely little jewel envelope is all the bits you need to build a simple straightforward Krell patch. A bit like this. Now this is a slightly tame curl patch. I've embellished it, enhanced it, I've quantized it a bit. So there's a few other things and bits and pieces going on. But in essence, it's all being run by the dual ASR. Right here, thank you Cockrell. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna look at. It's not difficult, it's actually really, really simple. With something as useful as this particular module, you can patch it together with no bother. And I'm just gonna step you through how you do that. Not all the other big stuff, just how you route this through the, the basic bits and pieces to produce this randomized, self-perpetuated melody of, of chaos and movement. That's the plan. If we can get some peace around here. Well, it doesn't take very many modules. Obviously you need your, your envelope, your um, modulatable envelope. I'll tell you what's important about that in a moment. You'll need uh, an AFO of some kind, probably some attenuators, depending on how crazy you want things to be. Then a sample and hold and noise. Now you can get away with a sample and hold generator, I suppose, and not actually have to do the sample and holding yourself. Does that make sense? No. Or you could probably do it with some kind of randomizer module or a Turing machine, anything which can be clocked in producing a random output. But I'll show you all that in a minute. There's too many wires, so I'm just gonna have to break this down so we get to the real basics. Right, so a nice clean patch. Not really gonna need the filter or the joystick, literally focusing on the envelope, VCA, some randomization, some LFOs. That is it. Now we need some sound from somewhere, so I'm taking it from the honor oscillator that I've got up on the top of my rack into the VCA. Now we're also gonna want an output. So I'm gonna plug that. So there's my oscillator. I've got a lot of reverb on there because that's the sort of thing that I like. So that's a good starting point. Now all we need is to apply a looped envelope to the CV. So the uh, Ericsson's Black Jewel ASR envelope generator can, is just a simple ASR envelope. So you've got attack, sustain, and then release. And it has a loopable function so that the envelope just goes round and round and round on a kind of attack decay styly. You can see the light here glowing as it goes up and down, up and down, loop, 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 loop. I'll turn you one off for the moment. What's important about the envelope generator and what's important in a Krell patch is that you can add CV to the attack stage and the decay stage. That's what makes it work. That plus the end of cycle trigger output. Every time that this LFO cycles round it throws out a little pulse and we use that pulse 
for running the timing of everything else. It will become clear in a moment. But first of all, let's do the simple thing of taking the envelope output and applying it to our VCA. So as you can see, our envelope is looping. If I turn one of the attack or decay stages up, it slows down because it's becoming longer. If I reduce that down, quicker. We want to have something going on, at least some kind of uh, gentle movement that we will start with as our base. Okay, next up we need to apply some pitch to the oscillator. We don't just want it on one note, we want it to find other notes. So for doing that we're going to add some randomization via uh, sample and hold circuit. Now the random step here from DivKid uh, is some very good sample and holdy stuff. How do you do that? Well a sample and hold simply takes a sample of whatever's coming into its input and holds on to that value until it takes the next one. Sample and hold. So if you stick something like white noise into it from this module here, the black modulator, then it has sort of like an infinite amount of possible values to grab hold of and therefore you get a really good randomized output. So I'm going to take the white noise output, plug that into the sample input on the random step. Now it needs to have some form of trigger to tell it when to take a sample. And that's where our end of cycle, what's it here, comes in, which is just genius. So you take the end of cycle, bleep, plug that into the trigger input on your sample and hold, I'm going to get a longer cable because that's going to get in the way. Now we're starting to get some lights here to show us that something is happening. Now we're going to want to take the output of this and plug it into the pitch input on our oscillator. So do we take the plus output or the plus minus output? I don't know, let's try them and see. Let's take that one, plug that into the oscillator. So every time there's a, a clock, it takes a resample. Although it doesn't seem to do it every time, I can't tell you exactly why that is. Let's try it in the plus and minus one. I think there's going to be bipolar, so you're going to get a greater range of notes potentially. That sounds pretty good. I might nudge the honor up an octave. So as I pull this envelope down and speed it up, you then start to get this generation of apparently random notes. See, that's already interesting. Now what really then creates the wanderingness of this patch is to throw some LFOs into the attack and the decay. And that then is constantly changing how fast the loop is going, how fast the LFO is going, how fast the notes are changing. So to do that you can just take the output of any LFO. I've got uh, the DivKid Oct over here, funnily enough. These are two very useful, <laughs> these two modules. Very useful, thank you DivKid. So I'm going to take a relatively slow LFO, plug that into attack. Now that's going to change how fast things happen. That's nice, isn't it? Now, 
if you do the same to the decay, it adds a further element of possible change, because at the moment the change is going to be very even. So we add another one in, one that's a slightly different speed, put that into decay. And it changes it immediately. You can try speeding those up, slowing those down. making one faster and slower than the other one. It's interesting. It's always immediately interesting. You're trying to work out exactly how is that happening and why is now nothing happening. And then it finds itself and then something happens and then it changes again. <laughs> it kind of boggles the mind as to what the relationship is. And I know that the LFOs in the OX are related to each other. So there is that aspect. You could use a different LFO to get something a little bit more uh, completely different, I suppose. But the other thing I like to do is I like to put in some attenuation. Because at the moment it's going all the way to something and all the way back again. So I think the best, um, I don't know, nuance to put in is some attenuation on the LFO. So it doesn't go quite so far in either direction. And takes a little bit longer to get there, perhaps. it that's all you've got just got a looping envelope it's looping round that's having its attack and decay being modulated by an LFO by two different LFOs attenuated to get a little bit of nuance you've got the end of cycle which is constantly changing triggering a sample and hold which is generating a value which is being stuffed into the oscillator to give us a note there's lots of things you can do from this point first one, for instance, is quantizing the output of the oscillator, or quantizing, rather, the output of the sample and hold. Stick that in a quantizer, restrict it to a few different notes, and the result will be more musical. So at the moment, the pitch could be anything. Of course, you could run the oscillator through a filter, and then, for instance, I used a similar idea on the second channel of the dual ASR to loop that to run the cutoff on the filter and to have an LFO going into that to change that at a different time to everything else, adding another sort of layer of randomness. You could use the end of cycle clock into a malt and put that into different things. You could run a sequencer, you could run other bits of modulation and other sound sources, other effects, whatever you like. It's simply from here that ideas start to, to bloom and go and move and it can turn into all sorts of things and take you into all sorts of directions. That's a Krell patch. At least, that's my understanding of one. <laughs> that's the, the simplified molten modular version of a Krell patch. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that the movement, the possibility, the notes that come out. <laughs> I've got a content. <laughs>
with rain. I've got cockerels, I've got helicopters going over. It's not really wanting me to do it today. I feel. <laughs> you could do this with any envelope that has a CV controllable attack and decay, attack, release, up and down, rise and fall, whichever way you want to look at it, provided that it has that ability to be modulated plus an end of cycle trigger, a pulse that happens every time it reaches the end of its thing, then you can build this sort of curl patch very, very simply. The Erica Sense Dual ASR EG has twice that ability, which is great. And previously, as I said, I've used the maths for this, the make noise maths, which is again, a perfect solution for it and brings that, that level of mystique that it, <laughs> in that you don't really know what's going on and it's a math and you're not supposed to know what's going on. But with the Erica Sense one here, it focuses you in and you absolutely do know what's going on and you're in control of it. It's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. It's not like the maths where I'm clueless. This actually know what's going on. And that's a beautiful thing. Very nice thing. So the Erica Sense Black Jewel ASR EG is a phenomenally useful envelope for all sorts of things. Do go and check out my full review of it. This is just one little aspect of being able to create this interesting, fascinating curl patch with this awesome dual envelope. I hope that's helpful. Got any questions? Stick them in the comments. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. It's just great, isn't it? <laughs> it's just a load of fun. All I did, I just patched in a patched in a filter, LFO to this to the second part of the, the dual envelope generator. Stick that to the cutoff, and you got a whole other thing going on. Simple. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> You can play with this sort of thing for hours. I'm not doing a thing. <laughs> you can leave it running for days and come back to it and it's always doing something interesting. Right. 